All right, so you're ready to dive into something kind of wild. We're talking AI hardware today, but uh, not the usual robots and self-driving car stuff. This is way beyond that. Yeah. We're talking about AI that can exist as like actual entities in these crazy realistic virtual spaces. Like they actually live there. Yeah. It's pretty mind blowing when you think about it. It is, and it's a really interesting area of exploration right now. Like, what does that even mean for the future of AI? You know, what happens when these things aren't just tools, but like inhabitants of these digital worlds? It really changes how we think about AI hardware. Right. Because we tend to think about robots, you know, physical things. Right, exactly. But the really exciting stuff is happening in that space where AI meets these digital environments. That's where things get really interesting. So it's less about the AI having a physical body and more about it having this presence, this impact inside the virtual world. Kind of like, I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, Cortana from Halo, even back then, that just blew my mind a little bit. Yeah. And that's a perfect example, actually. Right. Yeah. Cortana really captured that idea that AI could have this presence in a digital world, mm. that it could interact and impact its surroundings. And that was huge, even back then. Yeah. And that presence, that ability to interact, it's kind of a form of hardware itself. Mm -hmm. And as these virtual environments, these digital spaces become more complex and more realistic, you know, that line between physical and digital hardware starts to blur in some really interesting ways. See, this is what gets me fired up about this stuff. We hear all this hype about the metaverse, these immersive digital worlds. I mean, imagine if AI isn't just something we use in those spaces, but it's actually part of those spaces. It's like woven into the fabric of the whole thing. Absolutely. What would the tech behind that even look like, though? I mean, how do you even begin to build something like that? Well, one of the really fascinating things that's happening is that we're moving beyond this idea of AI that's constantly doing all these calculations, you know, for every little physics interaction. We're moving towards AI that can use what we call a single predictive model to interact with its environment. Uh -huh. And that environment can be physical or digital. Okay, you're going to have to break that down for me a little bit. I'm with you on the big picture stuff, but sometimes I need things explained like I'm five. Sure, sure. Um, let's think about it like this. Imagine Tesla's self-driving AI. Instead of constantly calculating the exact physics of every object on the road in real time. Which would be a lot. It would be impossible, really. Yeah. So instead of doing that, it creates this model of the environment, right? And it uses that model to predict what's going to happen next. So it's not just reacting to what is happening, it's trying to anticipate what's going to happen. Exactly, exactly. And that's much more efficient. So instead of freaking out about every tiny detail, it's like the AI is taking a step back and saying, okay, based on everything I know, this is probably what's going to happen, so let's just, you know, prepare for that. That's a great way to put it. Instead of worrying about the size and speed and trajectory of every potential obstacle, it predicts the most likely outcome and then it just acts accordingly. And this saves a huge amount of processing power, obviously, which can then be used for other things. Of course, yeah. And this same principle applies to these AI entities in the digital spaces, right? Yeah. It's not just about reacting to the environment, but anticipating it, you know, being a step ahead. Okay, hold on, my brain's trying to catch up here. So we've gone from AI as like this giant calculator to AI that's basically what, a mind reader. Predicting the future, that's a big jump. But what does that actually look like in practice? How does this whole prediction thing actually work? It's all about working smarter, not harder, right? Like, let me give you a concrete example. So you're exploring a virtual world, right? Now, instead of the system having to render every single leaf on every tree, every little ripple in the water, the AI predicts what you actually need to see. It's mm -hmm. based on where you are, where you're looking, that kind of thing. So like if I'm walking through this virtual forest and I come across a river, the AI doesn't need to show me every detail of the riverbank unless I actually go closer. You got it. Exactly. Only when you get closer and the AI predicts you're going to want more detail, that's when it renders it in. Yeah. But if you never go to that spot, well, it doesn't waste the processing power. You know, it creates the illusion of a complete world but it only renders what you absolutely need to see. Man, that's pretty wild. It's like the AI is basically designing the world as I explore it, always like a step ahead of me. Yeah, you could see that. And this same concept, it applies to augmented reality and virtual reality too. Think of it like, I don't know, a virtual picture frame hanging on a wall. Instead of it being this fully rendered object all the time, it might just start as a basic outline. But as you get closer, the AI goes, okay, they're probably gonna wanna see more detail now, and boom, it renders it in. The closer you get, 
the more detail appears. Okay, that's just cool. Like the AI is basically reading my mind, figuring out what I'm curious about, and then creating the world around that. What else can this predictive rendering do? I mean, that's just one example. Here's where it gets even more interesting. Imagine you have a virtual pet, right? And you leave the house for a while, you come back, and your pet's been doing all sorts of things in the virtual world, right? Now, the AI doesn't need to run a continuous simulation of your pet the whole time you're gone. That would be a lot of work. Yeah, it would be a waste, right? So instead, when you return, the AI uses all the information it has, like the pet's personality, its routine, and it predicts what your pet would have done while you were away. And it presents you with this believable sequence of events, so it really feels like the virtual world continued even when you weren't looking. Wow. Now that is what I call intelligent design. So the AI isn't just rendering the environment, it's like it's become a storyteller, creating these narratives, these whole stories on the fly. Exactly. This is where that line starts to blur between AI as this tool and AI as like this creative force. Yeah. And it's this kind of AI, this predictive physics-driven AI is going to unlock some insane possibilities for storytelling in these virtual worlds. I got to say, this is blowing my mind a little bit. It's pretty wild stuff. <laughs> We're talking about AI that's not just like playing chess or recognizing faces, but AI that's basically a digital puppet master, you know, yeah. creating these dynamic storylines on the fly. It's a whole different ball game. It really feels like we're seeing the future of storytelling unfold right in front of us. I think so, yeah. It's a total paradigm shift. Okay, so for our listeners who are uh, maybe still trying to wrap their heads around all of this, what are the big takeaways here? What do we really need to remember? I'd say the two key things are, first, AI hardware isn't just about robots in the real world anymore. Right. It's about how AI can exist and interact in both the physical and the digital. It's about that intersection. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And second, this whole idea of predictive modeling. That's a game changer. It allows AI to create these rich, realistic experiences, but with a fraction of the processing power. So it's not just about being more powerful. It's about being smarter with that power. You got Instead it. of just reacting to everything that's happening around it, the AI is starting to think ahead, anticipate what's next, and even shape the virtual world it lives in. It's a whole new level of sophistication, like you said. This has been an incredible deep dive. I think I need to go lie down and process all of this. There's a lot to take in. A huge thank you to you for breaking all of this down for us. It's been truly eye-opening. My pleasure. It's been fun. And to our listeners, we'll leave you with this. If AI can create these incredibly immersive, responsive virtual worlds, how will that change our relationship with technology, with each other, even with reality itself? Keep those minds curious, and we'll catch you in the next Deep Dive.